Hello everybody and welcome back to another podcast. I am here with the a Canadian living in Japan. Hello, Curtis. Hi, David. Today it's uh, two of us, but we have prepared for you lots of interesting materials. So uh, let's start with the uh, BTC holding at 18 to 19K and the speculations as to why. Would you like to start, Curtis? Yeah, so um, like you and I, we're chatting about this week is it's surprising um, with all of the uh, stock market volatility that uh, Bitcoin has not fallen off. It keeps holding this 18,800 to 19,000 range. And we've had what we've had three, three or four major stock sell offs that were very scary, really bad headline news. And yet somebody's buying the, the Bitcoin at at 18 18,500 or 19,000 there's obviously some sort of buy buy support there Pretty um much, yeah. and uh, we can speculate about why that is but um it continues that the june low of 17600 was the low this year um and uh it's holding uh so that's the update I still think there is still like 40% chance that we will see at least like 15,000, but it has to be like really, really soon, like in the upcoming few days. But I don't understand like why would it happen because uh, the inflation print is already uh, uh, is already out. We're going to talk about it in a minute. And yes, there is the quarterly report season that begins. So maybe if some of the earnings are like surprisingly bad or something unexpected hits us, but uh, I don't know, because there is also the Fed meeting. I think it's only in November now, so it's not going to happen in October. It already was, it already happened. So I don't know why it would, but it's like I just kind of I kind of don't want to give up the this this <laughs> idea. Like, um, you know, I had this thesis that my thesis of the ascending wedge would be invalidated, actually, if if we hold like we do. And if it doesn't happen like immediately, like it would have to happen in the following, like not even in the in seven days sooner than that, it would have to happen in the upcoming two, three days. If it doesn't happen, then I think that uh, my thesis is kind of invalidated. And then this was really not indeed ascending wedge because it has not broken down. Broken down means it would have to go below 17.6K. I it can Why only... the next two or three days? Sorry to interrupt. Why so? Why only in two or three days? I've noticed and I always fought for this and I always say to myself that this is the last time that I fell for it, that just before some sudden market move, like just before like a sell off or just before some bullish uh, break up, the, 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 those that, uh, the market just like fakes the other way and it's like very convincing. And if you remember what the stocks did on, on, uh, uh, on Thursday, on thursday yeah. it was like so convincing uh bounce from 3500 up it was and and it was like it it looked like like there is this is like the bottom like it looked like this is definitely the yearly bottom and uh that's one of the things that it kind of makes me think that that it might be the fake out that i always hold for and i always say to myself this was the last time i fell for it uh the the logarithmic regression this is the logarithmic regression of of Bitcoin, no, this is of the total currency, total uh, total market cap of the all cryptos. Yeah. So the trend line stands at 1.8864 trillion, and we were not. My target is 60% versus 40% uh, versus trend line. That's my target that I was really hoping to buy. It's not happened. It was like 45% uh, uh, two days ago, but not 40%. I was hoping that even even lower than that it's just like um i kind of i still i still think there is like 40 percent chance still i agree with you that it looks like it's it's a minority chance now but i still think it's 40 percent but i think upcoming few days should should tell us more if there is a further break up then i think that uh, then it's confirmed that we indeed held and then also my thesis is invalidated and then 15k is just not happening. We can proceed to the S&P 500 update because it correlates with what we are talking about. And I will sure. just say that 
Yeah, I agree with you that I really I didn't see the I didn't see coming lower. I I mean I did see coming the the lower stocks bottom. I think we've also talked about with Isabel about it, but I didn't see coming that the 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 crypto would hold uh, 18k right. actually. And this right. is the most surprising to me, and that's why I actually unfortunately even though my buy areas are lower than we are i unfortunately have to give it minority chance that we go to 15k right so yeah the SP has broken the june low uh consistently now so my idea that that was the bottom in june at 36.50 is is was wrong but we are holding around 3500 fairly well um friday was bad we sold off again on friday so you know, if something does break in quotations, like a major bank default, um, you could definitely see this go lower and that would drag down crypto, you would think. Maybe not, but you would think. If it uh, goes like really lower, like, like below 3,000, 34, yeah. yes, it definitely, then the 15K yeah. is guaranteed in that. So case, there would be, yeah. So we'll see if the stocks hold at 3,500 um, or not. Um, next couple of weeks are pretty important. Uh, the market fell 3% in the morning and then rallied like 5%. It was the like end of one of the strongest up. green candles. So it was like a, we're talking about a trillion dollar move both ways, like down a trillion and very, up. Very volatile. One point. So those are typically signs of a bottom that, again, yeah, that, head, I agree. that final head fake down. But Friday says we might be going lower. Um, so uh, why don't we look at inflation to discuss okay, that a little sure. bit? So my first chart is the core inflation. So we'll talk about core inflation versus headline. And, and the reminder is that core inflation does not include food and gas. Is mm -hmm. that right? Let me double check that. <laughs> I think that's right, Curtis. And which one of them do you think is more important? Uh, yes. So they they cut out food and gas. Um, this one rose to 6.6%. Uh, not good. And this is, yeah. so we've got an all time high look at how that's horrible right mm -hmm. um now um the next chart is more maybe why uh look at this so this is headline inflation which includes food and gas which is obviously very important because everyone uses food and gas so it's silly now we had an 8.2 the question would be has this chart topped it looks like it has right it what does that chart look like to you at least it's not rising. It looks like sideways, to be honest. Well, we're below. But, we're, uh, okay. So important is maybe to decide which which one the markets care care about more. What do you right, think? Right. Right. Um, yeah, I don't know, or which one the Fed cares about more. Yeah. So no, but you were asking me why perhaps stocks uh, bounced at thirty five hundred. I'm saying it could be that some investors are looking at headline inflation. At, and the 8.2 is well off 9.1 and you can see there's a topping and remember also that inflation is a lagging indicator or a lagging so mm -hmm. typically when it's rising it's going to rise more because it tends to be a momentum thing right mm -hmm. and when it's falling it it's going to it so i would predict in the next three to six months we're going to have headline falling uh this looks like maybe <laughs> core is rising i don't know but um, headline is a more um, comprehensive view of actually how much people are spending. And mm -hmm. so, and remember the stocks are forward looking six to 12 months. So if you're going to uh, bet 50, 50 is, is, uh, is inflation going to be lower by January or higher? You might say it's going to be lower looking at this chart, looking at the other chart, it might be the other way. Um, but the data is very staggered. So we've had the major pain on things like uh, the bond market and that recently. And so it's quite logical that we're trending down. That doesn't mean we are, but it, it's logical that going into 2023, the headline inflation is going to be lower because a recession's coming, right? And so, yeah, there's a lot of mixed signals. We're in very choppy waters, like the unemployment rate fell again. So if it fell, it's actually good news, right? Yes, and stocks sold off <laughs> because they think Jerome Powell's going to keep raising rates maybe above 5%. I don't know. Um, so we'll see. But um, in 
inflation remains the key thing. If it falls, uh, if the market senses it, it's going to fall over the next six months, that is good for stocks and risk assets in the very short term. I agree. Um, so let's have a look at the DXY, perhaps. Sure. We talked about it the last time. Yeah. So yeah. these are the daily candles. So yeah. So I tweeted about two weeks ago. I thought maybe one thirteen or one twelve was the top. I'm just guessing. And if it was the top, we talked about uh, S and P and Bitcoin being inversely correlated with mm -hmm. the DXY. Actually, and so if yes. you can call a DXY top, you can call a, a Bitcoin S uh, SPY uh, S and P bottom. And so, uh, what do you think? There can still be the week. And also what I think is that this is not only daily close, but also weekly close exactly on my line. And this right. line was not added uh, uh, two weeks ago. I added this line, I mean, good two months ago, I would say. Right. I, I, I added these two lines at the same time. Yeah, good. We were well done. still below this one. So yeah, uh, I still think this is the most crucial line and we mustn't close, we mustn't, not even opening the next monthly candle above this line would be really, really bad. And I really hope it's not going to happen. Right. I, so I believe it's not going to happen. So the next few weeks, there can be weak, but we need to close, we need to start closing lower than we are. But there can be a weak up. And in that case, it would be a weak down for stocks and it would be weak down for, for crypto. I'm still right. giving it 40% chance, but that chance is going to lower significantly, I think, because, because the volatility, you ask me why now, the volatility seems to be right now, like these days. And if there right. is a day for a massive big down and close back up, then I, I think I speculate that it's these days. Right, right. Uh, yeah, I agree with you on that. Just intuitively, it seems like it's now or the market stabilizes. We've had, what, about two or three months now of very big fear in the markets, right? And, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the thing about when you see these polls that say, you know, 70% of investors are bearish or 80% are bearish, why that's so important? Of course, that shows sentiment, but also the, the logical important. fact that those people have already sold. They've already sold by definition if they're mm -hmm. bearish and therefore there's no more sellers left, right? What, you know, when you're in a bull market, when the last bull buys, that's the top, right? The top of the mm -hmm. market is when the last bullish, the mar last marginal buyer buys. I always have small uh, buyers buying at the top and you always have small sellers selling at but the top. But, but you get the point that when, when uh, everyone's bullish, that's that's the top mm -hmm. i agree with that absolutely and the influencers it's not just sentiment they actually run out of things to buy or sell so another thing about bull markets is people run out of money they put all their money into the market they already bought a million coins uh, right or and so they just run out of money and same on the downside sellers run out of things to sell all the scared the scared uh monkeys have run away and and there's no one left to sell and i think we're getting close to that would I you mean, think that the influencers are bearish or bullish at the moment uh bearish are you sure i mean there's been a lot of pain um and it's been it hasn't gone to 12 15k but we've had three months yeah at 19k it's it was that june is it been 90 days now where we've been it's been between, a long time it's been a long and time that's now. that's another way of resolving like anyone who was worried about the Bitcoin price crashing has already sold, I think. Could be. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's have a look at the reasons why asset prices might crash further. Okay. So this is the other side of the argument. Um, we haven't really had anything break yet. Like I know you're going to talk about um, mm -hmm. uh, talk the about UK pension, a little bit. But um, we're seeing currency spikes, which are really scary. Japanese yen is now up at like 139 or 140, which is insane. Um, so you're seeing currency pain, but we haven't seen a break, like again, a, a bank failure or um, a pension fund blowing up. We haven't seen that yet. 
And that's where you get into the Lehman crisis type discussions. Uh, we haven't seen credit freezes. So we're still in that non 2008 scenario where it's, it's, it's not as bad as 2008, but it's worse than 2018. We're in that zone. And the reason is people are still spending, people have jobs. Uh, I saw that the Canadian housing market is not selling off. It's basically going flat. And the reason is a lot of people are just holding onto their houses. So we're not getting a panic in the Canadian real estate market, even though rates are rising. Um, unemployment rate is low. People have their jobs. So all of that house of cards idea that, you know, people lose their jobs, then stocks crash, then housing crashes, and it, and it just crashes the whole thing. That's just not happening yet. Uh, what would trigger that? No one is smart enough to know that. Um, for me, the biggest concern is the currency swings. So we're talking about the Japanese yen dropping 30% in a year. That's frightening, um, especially anyone that doesn't own some crypto as a hedge because um, all fiat are looking extremely weak. Fiat's had a bad time. And I think confidence is getting lost. Um, if you want to look at Euro. This is <laughs> Euro. Yeah. So it's below parity. Yeah. yeah. And it hasn't and look been. At the so chart. Look at the chart. It hasn't been so far. Let's look at monthly because uh, let's look at macro. It hasn't been so for 20 years. So yeah, yeah we are 20 years. So oh. um, and then look at the yen. The yen is crazy. So what do you do if you're a Japanese person who holds Japanese yen as security? You've been really wrong. So what do you buy? Do you buy US dollar? Well, you, many people will. Do Let's you buy Bitcoin? It. Do you Let's buy another it. currency? Do you buy, uh, you know, so anyways, um, that's the scariest thing I'm seeing, but it still hasn't broken anything that I know of. So that's what we're looking for is some headline that says Deutsche Bank failed, Credit Suisse failed. Um, so maybe maybe you want to talk about um, the pension funds? I have prepared a little materials here. So uh, let's start. So the size of the pension fund industry is estimated to be about 40 trillion. So that's a lot of money. And uh, I'm talking about this subject because we recently got a scary UK headlines. I have dug up one of these headlines. This is from the 15th of October. This is literally yesterday. Yeah. The headline says how Britain's pension scheme hedge become trillion pound, trillion pound gamble. So, uh, and I want to talk about a little bit about why this is not my ideas, this chart are not mine, but uh, I came across this and I think that this uh, is worth to, to think about. So uh, why it happened and can it happen elsewhere? That's going to be my findings. So first of all, uh, let's talk about a little bit of the backgrounds. So the pension funds are the business, are in the business of accumulating, accumulating premiums today and investing them such that they will be able to pay out pensions, which are liabilities in the future. And there is, a, you know, this is pension funds. So this is a huge social impact, you know, and they have a huge social responsibility to stay solvent, yeah. to guarantee this solvency, they, uh, these risks need to be hedged. Uh, but at the same time, they have to make sure that they generate the needed returns. So they yeah. are able to pay uh, like uh, 20, uh, 30 years. So the 20, 30 year government bonds are or were obvious candidate uh, as an asset to buy in order to hedge the interest rate risk of a 20 to 30 years pension liability. Uh, but as the uh, yields kept moving lower for a decade, the, the yields of government bonds, uh, they also meant that the pension funds were looking uh, in all their cash in uh, uh, low yielding products. Uh, so what the pension funds started to do, they started to do more quote unquote swaps. Uh, swaps are uh, and a little bit more complex. I didn't go that much deep into how the swap exactly work, but um, important to remember for me at least is that they it's are derivative. der derivatives. Yeah. that are mostly clear, cleared through the clearing house and the clearing house does not accept riskier assets as collateral and now since we have 
uh, times as this when the interest rates are moving really more uh, are moving up faster than they predicted they had the risk models of course you know these these guys are supposed to be the pros right yeah so they had all the risk models but they don't account for such a uh, such a sharp move up right so uh, it, they, the interest rates move six to eight times standard deviations. Yes. And that's why, as we've talked with Curtis numerous times in the past, the old, the 30 year old bonds are very old bonds and they are moving dramatically down in prices. The price is falling, yes. The prices is falling. And that's why the funds are getting margin calls. And when they do, when they meet the mar when they get the margin call, they are literally it's it's the same old illiquidity crisis happens, right. which happens right. all, all over and over. And they are forced to sell their assets, including more bonds, right? So then, the bonds are going down even more, right? Like it's it's a spiral, and this is yep. the. This is the this is the actual chart, right? Uh, it's the uh, percent drawdown down from previous uh, uh, year's price high. So uh, you can see that this is from 1990 to what happened right now with the with the 30 year bonds. Great. And Easy. and the Bank of England stepped in and I think they started buying the, the bonds to stop the spiral, right? But yeah. Now, the question is, uh, why did it actually happen? Well, we've just talked about why they are um, the, the bonds uh, are uh, they have their money in the swaps, the, the cash in the swaps. They can't use it as a collateral and they are they are facing illiquidity problems. And also what I also found from, from these findings, what I saw is that the UK's uh, pension fund industry is actually compared to the size of its economy just too huge. It's mm -hmm. hundred and nineteen percent versus its GDP. And this is the right. table that this is the chart that shows it. So let me perhaps yeah interesting. I can. So uh, this is this is this is interesting uh, interesting table here because you can see that the United Kingdom had one hundred and eighteen. This column is what we talk about, the fourth column. It's the pension funds versus, versus the GDP in percent in percentage. Right. So uh, that's when the number is over 100%, it means that uh, the country is likely their pension uh, fund industry, their pension fund uh, volume size is just too huge compared to its economy. And the United Kingdom is not the worst from the European Union. The worst is Netherlands, 210 percent. So right. if this if I'm right here, the Netherlands might be the next. Depends on how many swaps they own, depends on you know where they, you know, how exposed they are there and there. But well, this... the pension size also just has to do with how much people save. So it's not necessarily a bad thing in the mm -hmm. sense that um if it means there's a lot of wealth there like look at canada mm -hmm. which is a very small country but but um you're right that oh, there's 100%. there's risk relative there's risk relative to the the size of the economy yeah especially now yeah. when the government bonds uh, old government bonds prices go dramatically down that's that's the risk now and what it can actually happen the conclusion we are potentially potentially dealing with liquidity crisis of certain countries pension funds and if the liquidity crisis uh, happens, which uh, seem to have ha seem to have been happening in the UK right now, it, the result of that is that uh, the funds are forced to sell their, the, well, they everything they own, equities. So just the bonds and also the stocks that they have invested in, they also invest in stocks. Maybe they invest in crypto. I don't know as well. Who knows? <laughs> right. I don't know. Right. Right. But, uh, maybe very small percentage uh, but uh yep um uh, pension funds uh, could be something that could break not maybe not now because we've just had the headlines and the uk's frightening you know example so i'm sure countries are gonna take precautions but maybe the next year i mean this this is right not, it's in the risk 
Well, and no sovereign country would let its pensions collapse, so they would start money printing again and just mm -hmm. uh, oh, well, maybe, put band aids yeah. on it. Yeah, yeah. They would, that's when QE would, would come back, stopped? right? Because they would. Well, the government can't let. If the pensions collapse, that means uh, all the retirees die. <laughs> they that's, they have uh, no food, right? Sure. So um, you'd have a. So they'll go in and print more, and uh, so what they're doing now is they're buying the risky bonds just like in 2008 right it was the same thing it was derivatives so people mm -hmm. were trading multiples of something in in crypto you call it leveraged trading you you have one bitcoin but you borrow five or you borrow 10 or you borrow 100 so when you say 100x leverage mm -hmm. in 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 an exchange in crypto that's what they were doing here they were doing six or seven times leverage and they didn't imagine that interest rates would rise so much and they went underwater. So um, now why were the pension funds doing that? It's because they were only getting 2% because in global interest rates were so low, they weren't getting enough cash off the bonds. So they get forced into riskier trades, right? Because a typical pension fund is trying to earn about 7%. And if your bonds are paying 0% like Japan or 1%, you don't have enough to get to the 7%. So you're forced so to take more that's why right. what I said that that's why the swaps came in and that's why yes. it has become more popular actually. Yes. You know, they, they were forced. Well, they weren't forced they were to, forced but they had incentive to, to, to go to more risky. Yes. More risky. And bonds are supposed to be the safe part of the portfolio. Mm -hmm. So they were breaking <laughs> the rule there, right? Yeah. Stocks are yeah. supposed to be risky and bonds are supposed to be safe. Mm -hmm. Well, now we're having both fall, which is it's never happened before. Or rarely, rarely, let's say. So, um, yeah, all these bonds, uh, the governments are going to have to buy up all these these uh, unattractive bonds. Like a 30-year bond at 2% isn't very interesting when inflation rate's 8%, because in 30 years, it's going to be worth nothing. You're losing 6% yeah. a year, right? Yep. If you're losing 8% purchasing power and getting a 2% yield, that means you're losing 6% guaranteed why that would you buy sense. that why would you buy that yeah okay so interesting okay. yeah so if something like this blows up yeah that would be a trigger where we go, go lower this year in stocks and we'll probably and get to also the, we will come back to money printing that was a excellent point by the way then we would come back to money bring money printing well, my biggest argument is why, like, I don't think they can go much higher than 5% on the Fed rate simply because they'll blow up the stock market and they'll blow up the pension market, the pension funds. The the politicians will not accept this. The United not States is quite as well, like the pension fund uh, uh, industry is huge as well. You know, it's close to 100% comparing yeah. to size it's, to its economy. So, And remember, the baby boomers are the retirees. So they're the ones counting yeah. on the pensions and they have the most wealth. They also have the most political power. So there's going to be incredible pushback if stocks uh, start crashing further. Um, and I don't think, uh, I think basically Joe Biden would either fire Powell or just close the Fed or um, threaten him to do something uh, because otherwise um, there would literally be riots in the streets because people, their pension funds would be cut in half. We have to wrap this up, I'm afraid. So uh, um, thank you very much for uh, listening to us and tune us again in a couple of weeks time. Um, I think maybe the good time will be like the beginning of November to have a look at what happened. Thanks a lot.